Hello everybody, it's Chris from Military Aviation History and today I want to talk to you about how the automatic dive recovery system on the Junkers JU-87 dive bomber worked. I'm doing this as sort of a thank you for all those people who have already funded and have also now pushed my new crowdfunder into the next stretch goal. Uh, the crowdfunder being of course my book Stuka, the doctrine of the German dive bomber. If you want to have more information on that check out the link in the description below. And yeah thank you very much to the 350 people who have now uh, first of all funded the uh, book within just over 24 hours and have now also pushed it into the next stretch goal. So hopefully we can uh, make a few more and just complement the work with a couple of additional chapters. But the second reason why I want to talk about the dive recovery system is actually a couple of questions I got in relation to my last video inside the cockpit of the Junkers JU-87. And I had a little bit of a spiel on the Abfangverrichtung, so the dive recovery system there. And uh, let's just talk about it in a little bit more detail, shall we? What is it for? Why is it being used? How does it work? And what does it do and what does it not do? It's a couple of uh, things that have been written about the Abfangverrichtung where I think, uh, I think they more or less got the idea of it right but they haven't really maybe engaged with the system in that much of a detail and that has led us to misunderstand it a little bit so let's go into all that detail i'm going to start by uh, just taking my uh, ju87 model here as a little bit of a reference to show you what exactly is going on so i've got a ju87 and we of course have the horizontal stabilizers in the back, right? And attached to those horizontal stabilizers, as you expect, the elevators. And on the trailing edge of these elevators, we have what the Germans call Höhenruder Trimklappen, essentially just trim tabs, which the pilot can use to trim out the aircraft in the pitch axis so that it either goes nose up, for example, or nose down, or stays straight and level at the speed that he's flying at. And the Abfangvorrichtung is linked to these trim tabs. Next to the Abfangvorrichtung, however, the Stuka also has the Sicherheitssteuerung. What is the Sicherheitssteuerung? It's a little bit difficult to translate, actually, but I'm going to go for Control Surfaces Deflection Limiter, making four words out of a single one. Isn't that beautiful, translating out of the German into the English language? So let's go through the Abfangvorrichtung and the Sicherheitssteuerung as we're going to go into a dive with this aircraft. So as you're approaching the target in the Stuka, you're going to go through a pre-dive procedure. I'm not going to go through the whole procedure right now. Suffice it to say, the pilot will flick a switch and he will pop the air brake on both sides. They're coupled, of course, and that will slow down the aircraft and essentially make it ready for the dive. What also happens as he pops that switch and the air brakes pop out, the dive recovery system, as well as the Sicherheitssteuerung, so the deflection limiter, are automatically activated as well. In fact, the dive recovery system is not just a dive recovery system, it actually trims out the aircraft to be set for the attack. Because what happens is that as the elevator trim or the pitch trim is set, the aircraft, depending on the deflection that you're holding, will have a natural nose down tendency at this point. You can of course counter it by a little bit more control input and keep the aircraft in level uh, flight until you wanna go into your dive. But if you wouldn't do that, the aircraft would automatically go into the dive and it just eases that transition from level flight in, into the actual dive for your attack. As you're attacking, let's say you're going to go at a uh, cheerful 70 degree angle. In fact, 90 degree angles were relatively rare in Stukas. My documents in the book will also uh, show that. But uh, let's go into a cheerful 70 degree dive. Uh, you then go, of course, through your bombing sequence. Again, something maybe for another video. There's like an acoustic tone that, uh, that is being played for the pilot as well in order to get the correct drop uh, altitude. But as the bomb drops, it is, of course, swung out from underneath the ang uh, Stuka on these bomb-carrying arms out of the prop arc towards the enemy. As that happens in the early models of the Stuka, so let's say the B model until the D3 model, the aircraft automatically then sends a signal to the dive recovery system as the bomb swings out underneath it. And the Abfangvorrichtung in the tail will, with a magnet sending an electric impulse, pull on a control cable that activates the servos in the back and they immediately deflect 
the trim tabs into an up position, meaning that the aircraft will now get a nose up movement. And in fact, as the pilot is going through his dive and as the system activates, he will feel a slight jolt in the aircraft and will notice it slowly pulling out as well. And at this point, he of course pulls and recovers the aircraft. As the aircraft recovers out of the dive, the pilot is in fact limited in the deflection that he can set the elevators because of the deflection limiter, the Sicherheitssteuerung. This limits him, depending on which manual you believe, to an angle of 5 to 7 degrees of deflection. In emergencies, he can override the system to get up to 13 degrees of deflection. And the reason why this was introduced in the Stuka is to prevent the pilot from pulling too hard and from having a too short dive recovery radius, which will put a lot of strain and forces on the actual airframe and potentially lead to, uh, well, to failures either in the, uh, in the airframe or at least to damage in the airframe. And also for the pilot himself, it'll be very uncomfortable. Of course, as he's going through this sequence of pulling out, he's going to experience a lot of g-forces on himself as well. In fact, it's going to be extremely unpleasant. Not as unpleasant as being on the receiving end of the bombs, but a close second. And some pilots may, in fact, during this sequence of pulling out, not initially, but perhaps sort of at the cusp of going into the horizontal, black out. However, since you have the dive recovery system in the back with the nose up the trim setting, the aircraft, even if the pilot loses consciousness, as long as he doesn't do a crazy maneuver with his stick, will still recover the aircraft out of that dive. So to sum it up then, not only does it initiate the pull-up sequence and assists the pilot in doing so, it also prevents a violent machine human ground interface if the pilot blacks out in the closing stage of the pullout. Once he is out of the dive and he's back into a horizontal heading trying to get away from very angry AA gunners, he then retracts the air brakes, of course, because they are unnecessary drag, and as he does so, automatically the Abfangvorrichtung and the Sicherheitssteuerung, uh, Steuerung, I nearly said that with an American accent there, Sicherheitssteuerung are being deactivated as well. I'm just gonna put the model down for now. Let's talk about a couple of things that could happen. What if the Abfangvorrichtung is missing because some Staffeln or some Gruppen actually uh, removed them from the aircraft because they didn't trust those things? Or what happens if uh, they fail? Well, you can still, of course, recover the aircraft just fine. The Abfangvorrichtung does help a lot by initiating the pullout and also providing a sort of a fail-safe in the case of a blackout at the uh, bottom cusp of your uh, of your uh, dive recovery. So if the Abfangvorrichtung is not installed or is malfunctioning, the manual advises you to crank on the uh, trim wheel for your pitch axis and give it one and a half full rotations as you're pulling out of the dive. And that will set those trim tabs at the same angle as the dive recovery system would do it automatically and you can pull out of your dive a little bit easier. And that really shows us what the system is meant to do. It is not meant to recover the aircraft automatically fully out of the dive. It is meant to initiate the recovery system as well as make sure that it is completed at the end in case of a blackout or assist the pilot in doing so, for example, if he's wounded or even wake him up, up when he's tunnel visioning with that, uh, with that jolt in the aircraft that, uh, that will happen as the uh, trim tabs are being deflected. I said earlier on that the Abfangvorrichtung is only installed in the right horizontal stabilizer and is only connected to the uh, corresponding, uh, corresponding trim tabs. In the D5 version, so that's a quite a late version of the Junkers A27, we see a change actually. The Sicherheitssteuerung is completely removed from the aircraft and the Abfangvorrichtung is no longer linked directly to the bomb drop sequence. So let me take my model just again. You will remember that I said that in an earlier version of the Stuka, as the bomb swings out underneath you, automatically you have that impulse being sent to the uh, dive recovery system and it initiates that dive uh, recovery sequence. In the D5, what happens instead is that the pilot drops his bombs 
and the aircraft will still stay in the heading that it has right now. He can then flick a switch on his throttle, which was later removed from the throttle and put on a stick where it's actually a lot better since a lot of pilots will use both hands to pull out. And as he flicks that switch, the dive recovery system is initiated. So it's a two, two action sequence rather than a one single action sequence. Why this is, again, I've tried to look for the reason, I'm not quite sure. It is possible that maybe what Stuka pilots wanted to do, or the idea behind it is, that it makes it less obvious when the Stukas are pulling out. Because of course, as you're seeing the bombs drop, the Stuka pulling out will become a much larger target. Imagine that you're, oh, I seem to have lost my flaps and ailerons there. That's annoying, it did fall down earlier as I was preparing to shoot, so that was annoying. But just look at this. This is what comes at you if you're an AA gunner shooting at a Stuka. And if it pulls out, this is what happens. So you have a larger target surface and maybe the idea was to not make it as predictable to the enemy gunners as when this uh, Stuka is pulling out but that's just a little bit of a speculation on my part and I haven't really found conclusive evidence to support that. Of course, in the later model of the Stuka, the JU-87G model, where it became a dedicated anti-tank hunter, the dive brakes were removed and the uplink vorrichtung was removed as well. And of course, the Sicherheitssteuerung was long removed already due to the modifications made to the D5. So in that sense, um, that is no longer something that is being used by the Stukas, but when they were still dive bombing, that was one of the uh, neat little features that the aircraft had. So I hope you enjoyed that little look at uh, how the dive recovery system for the JU-87 worked and how it did not work, what it was meant to do and what it was not meant to do. And of course, if you want to uh, join, I think we're sitting about 350 backers now, and uh, get yourself a copy of my new book, Stuka, the Doctrine of the German Dive Bomber, please do check out the website with the uh, campaign there. You can help us push on towards the next stretch goals. And if you've already backed the project, thank you so much. I greatly appreciate it. I'm very much excited at sending it out to all of you. I'm looking forward to all your feedback as well on that. And if you want to also help us uh, uh, make those stretch goals and just complement the work a little bit more, consider sharing the, uh, the, uh, the campaign on social media, Facebook, Discord, maybe some aviation focused forums. And yeah, thank you very much and have a great day and see you in the sky.